Uh, hello again folks. So um, for anybody that's been following the wee tying videos that I've been putting up, um, I've been trying to give like a path, you know what I mean, that I've started off reasonably easy flies to tie and then moving up from there. So progressing on, um, the next fly that um, the majority of people should learn to tie is a black panel. Now the hook in the vise is a size 12 barbless wet short shank from Blood and Buzzard. The thread I'm going to use is Semperfly 50 denier nano silk. So we'll just get our thread started behind the eye of the hook. Run on a few turns. One layer of scissors and take away your excess. Run your thread on down to the rear of the hook, down to where your barb would be <coughs> if there was a barb in the hook. Now, the tail on the fly is pheasant tuppet, um, that's the top of a full pheasant tuppet. Now, we don't need all of that, you only need about about six to eight fibres. So we'll take away what we need. So that's our tuppet for the tail. Now the length of your tuppet, keep your tuppet round about the length of the body of your fly. So just shy of that second black mark. It normally falls on round that, this point here, that black second point. So it's just going to fall inside of that. So put your loop to start and then a full turn to secure that down. <clears throat> now what you want to do is take the time and make sure your top of it is sitting straight with the shank gear hook. So the next part in the fly is a piece of silver wire. Now this is only fine silver wire so we'll take off roughly about two and a half three inches so this is our, our wire and what you want to do is tie that on alongside our top it so see again punch and loop to start and then start bringing <clears throat> our thread towards the eye of the hook. So come on then and trim off our excess stock. And a few turns of thread then to secure down that, that loose end. Now for the body of the flea <coughs> you have two options. You can either use Floss or black dubbin. Now, <clears throat> um, I'm going to use the dubbin. If it's handier for you, just use the floss, but for the purposes of this, I'm just going to use the black seals for. So, pull away a pinch. Now, all you need is just a pinch, you don't need that much. Over double, <coughs> run our thread towards the rear of the hook. Taking your time now to secure down our tail where we want our double to start from. So, what I do with mine is I turn the hook 90 degrees in the vise, and the reason why you do that is because. It keeps the hook point on my side and it's easier for me to see whenever I'm dubbing forward to wind on the dubbing. Now, your pinch of dubbing, take off the slightest wee nub and dub that onto your thread. Now the way I dub is, I hold on to the bobbin holder and I twist the dubbing in the one direction. And as that's coming on the ship, I slide that up towards the body of the fly. Then take off 
and all our sliders wheeling up and do the same. Double that on until it comes under the same shape as the butter only after sliding up and slide that butt up. And just keep adding your dubbing on wee nups like that there. Now you can go at it and set the whole um normally what I would do is I put on the whale, put it on down here in a big butt and then gradually bring it up. But for those of you that's just started and trying to get a hand of dubbing, this is the easiest way here. So same again, just dub on your wee bit of dubbing and slide it up. And same again, another wee, wee bit more than that, another wee punch, dub it onto your thread and slide that up to your noodle. So that's our dub on the noodle. Now that's roughly about, um, about three inches long. That's more than enough. There's still dubbing left from the punch that I took out. So when we're dubbing now, before you make your full turn, Give your dubbing an hour twist to tighten that all in. Now as you come round, each turn that you give, tighten in your dubbing. Give an hour turn and tighten in your dubbing again. And what you're looking to do is to keep that body shape uniform from the back of the flight to the front. And every turn you come over, an hour wee twist. And what that does is it just keeps the the dubbing going on at the same level so that you're not sitting there a big bump here at the tail and nothing in between the big bump at the front or the opposite way about. So just keep dubbing that up towards the eye of the hook. Now don't come right up tight to the eye. You want to leave a gap of about 3 or 4 mil. The reason being is we have a hackle then coming on after this dubbing. So there's actually a wee bit too much on that so I'll strip back the stuff that's not needed come on then and pull everything back towards the rear of the hook and secure that down now our <coughs> silver wire you know, just be careful with your tuppet when you're bringing your wire over because if you put the wire on too tight at the back, you'll pull the tail down. So when you're bringing your first turn of wire over, make sure your wire goes over the dubbing and not over the tail. As I say, if you pull it over the tuppet, you'll end up pulling the tuppet down. So your first turn of wire on over the dubbing. And then start bringing up towards the eye of the hook. And open turns and you want to get about four maybe five depending what size you're tying um, it's normally around about four come on then a couple of turns to secure off that wire pull your wire towards the front come on then and tighten that down come on then helicopter your wire away. Now, <clears throat> um, next thing on the on the fly, this is just, this is if you're dubbing, this is just a wee bit of velcro on a stick and just give that dubbing a wee, slightest wee pull, just to roughen it up and give us a wee bit more of a buggy look to the body and as you'll see that's just roughened that body up a wee bit not overly roughed but just enough that we get a wee bit of movement out of the dog on this wheel now hackles there are two types of hackles general hackles for um, Hack one trout fleece. So I'll separate these two and show you the two. So what you have is you have either a cock haggle 
which is this one here, which is longer and has a tapered end, or a hen hackle, which is this one here, that is shorter and has a rounder top, right? And the difference in the two is cock hackles have stuffer fibers and they're thinner, right? Now, what cock hackles are generally used for is for water with a faster flow where you have that bit of pressure that's forcing the, the fibers back on the hackle or smaller fillers for dry flakes because of the stuffness on the, on the fibers and the filler itself. So generally these are used for uh, rubber flies or if you want a fly with a, a stronger profile use a cock hackle. Now our hen hackle which is this one here has webbier fibers and they're softer. Right? So if you're fishing slower water, slacker water or still water or lakes, I prefer using hen hackles. And the reason being is it takes less movement of that fly to work the hackles than it does with the cock hackle. Right? Now for this I'm going to use the hen hackle. So what you do with your hen hackle is this downy fluff here, you strip all that away. And just leave the pieces that we want to use for our hackle, which is this piece here. So strip away, pull back the uh, the longer fibers that we want to keep for our hackle. Come on then with your scissors and trim away that excess and leave yourself this wee triangle and that's what we're going to use to tie off at the head of the fly. We tie off that triangle and haggle with this. So lay the triangle down, a few turns of thread over the top to secure that. Now you haggle pliers. Come on then. Grab our stock. Pull all our fibers back from the filler and start winding towards the eye of the hook. And as you come round, just encourage them fibers to fall back. And take your time when you're hackle. It's not a rush or no. They're nothing to be gained from from rushing through at it. As I say, take your time and give yourself time to get that shipped round. Yeah, that's a wee bit too long for me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna strip off about a dozen fibres each side and the reason why I strip them off is we're going to tie down on top of the stock so rather than tie down on top of the excess fibres roll your filler back take off your excess and then bring your filler back up again. <clears throat> so, one more turn should just about do it. Run that round. Until our filler has been used up. Come on then with our thread. Secure down our stock. And come on then on. 
couple of turns over the stock. Makes for everything. Pull towards the right of the hook and give half a dozen good turns over the top of that to secure that down. Right. If I find it, lost the stock. It'll turn up. <laughs> so, <clears throat> what I like to do is give her thread a wee coat of varnish. You only need about an inch of your thread with his double varnish on it. And all that does is just secure on what we have tied. Now that doesn't stop you from varnishing the head of the fly. All that does is just secures on, as I say, what we have tied already. Come on then. And from all your excess. <clears throat> so that's basically the black panel. Now what you want to do is come on and lift out all them hand fibers. There's my stock there. We ran away on the last time. So there we go folks, that's your hand haggle, black pineal. Now, um, for anybody that's been um, following the wee videos I've been putting up, as I said at the start, I was trying to um, keep like a, a structure to them, um, where the initial videos were pretty easy to follow, and the, the black pineal is pretty easy to tie as well. But if you can master the black pineal, um, it opens a whole range of doors because all you have to do is change the colour of your body, change your tail material, you have a range of different flies. Keep the black pineal and put a tail filler over the top and you have a tail in black. Change the body colour and put a tail filler over the top and you can have a tail in olive or a tail of an orange or... It means changing your hackle and changing your uh, your body colour. You can also wing it as well. Um, as I say, that's the basis there for hundreds of our flies. You know what I mean? And a black pineal is pretty easy to tie. So, there you go folks. That's an easy black pineal. Easy to tie. And one that, if you're interested in, looking at moving on from tying really easy flies that's a must learn there so thanks for watching folks and till the next time tight lines <laughs>